I have a quick video here on um, how to solve this problem, create a horizontal menu along with the side menu navigation in Ionic Framework using ReactJS components. Um, the magic of it is all solved by using this window match media, which allows you to do media queries and get a result back. And then based on that result, we can hide and show the this menu across the top here. Um, this is the app in action. So as you can see, when they, we have our larger window, we get our menus across the top, our home one, two, home one, two. And then as the page size gets smaller, it triggers and the we get the side menu navigation. We get page two, page one, and home page. Um, so how do we do this? Um, like I said, most of you guys don't want to sit here and see me tap away code because then I got to speed the video up and it's hard to follow. So I'm just going to kind of, the code is posted on GitHub. So, well, first of all, here, here's the blog post on Dev2. And then the code is also posted on GitHub. So you can see here it's listed in uh, GitHub. So you can go up to GitHub and get the actual code. Um, once again, thanks to the channel. Please make sure you like and subscribe. Um, also, please leave comments if there's something interesting, a problem that you want me to solve. In fact, I found this issue in the Ionic forum, and I said, let me take a look at this and see if I can get this going. Because um, it was an interesting challenge. So here we go. We're just going to quickly walk through the code. So what we have is we have our, our basic Ionic application. We have our Ionic React router. We have our router path set to home, page one, page two. We have our components. This is all straightforward stuff. For those of you who have never used a side menu before, um, important things about the side menu is you have to set this ID content here on main. And then when I open up my menu component, you'll see my menu component is looking for that same ID here. The end basically puts it over here on the left side, I mean on the right side as opposed to the left side. And then we list our menu. So if I shrink this back down, I'll shrink this down. Come on, where's my menu? Shrink this down and we get my menu. So this is my menu header. Um, these are all my menu items. This router link thing is kind of cool. It allows you to just you know, the but, um, make your ion item a button and then set the router link and provide the path you want to jump to. And then it just jumps to it. And so that's all we have here for the rest of the, the menu toggle auto hide forces the menu to hide as I select the item. So this is basic uh, sign menu code. The interesting part is how do we get the navigation menu across the top and then also get that navigation menu across the top to reflect the um, to reflect the values that we have. Why is this thing like sticking sometimes? What the heck is going on here? Sometimes I don't know. Sometimes I like it stuck, but um, yeah, there we go. So to get this menu across the side, and then this menu to kind of perform the exact same way the side menu does. Um, so let's take a look at um, that component. So if we look at our home page, we'll see that all our pages have this nav buttons component in it. That's our um, home page, page one, page two. I could probably solve this with a context API, but you guys have seen a lot of context API shit. So I'm going to try something different. Um, maybe I'll try doing it with context API later, but for now we have this nav button component. And inside this nav button component, what we're doing here is we're using use effects. And with use effects, it's getting called on each render. And on each render, what it's doing, it is listening for a change based on this match media query. And what this match media query does here, here's the documentation. Um, I'll put the link in the video. But it's a, it returns a media query list object. That basically determines the whether or not um, this query matches. And so what I've done here is I've kind of included a snippet of what the JSON object is that returns, and it lists what the queries you're making, and it just sets its matches to true if your query matches it. So what I do is inside of use effects, I listen, uh, execute the query, I um, Listen for the results of the query with this add listener, and then the add listener calls set m query, which is my use effects. I mean, not my use effects, my use state function up here for m query. So every any time this value gets updated, um, it will call use state. 
new state will set um, mQuery, and then mQuery will have this matches information. And then what's happening is that inside this button components, this nav button components render section, we see if I have the mQuery object, and then I check and see if the mQuery object matches or not. If it doesn't match, meaning that my minimum width of um, 768 is false, um, then I just draw the hamburger menu. But if it does match, um, then what I do is I draw this whole thing. I draw all of my iron buttons, which is what you're seeing across the top. And the iron buttons that I'm drawing use this exact same concept of just router link slash home, um, which allows me to go through the pages that I want. Two things that are really, 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 really important. A, you've got to set this ID here appropriately on the router, and this ID needs to match back in your menu. Let's go back in your menu. You need to make sure this ID matches. Um, another thing that I see people do sometimes is make sure you have the menu wrapped inside the Ionic Re React router and the outlet around your specific routes. Um, and then I think that's pretty much the last thing. Like I said, this is going to be a pretty short video. I suspect also as I'm playing with this a little bit that there might be um, a, I probably need to do something to kind of resolve this use effect issues to appropriately Let's see, it's complaining that I don't have the appropriate uh, I don't have the appropriate, appropriate settings. I think I'm supposed to do something like this so that this will, of course, it to only run once because I really only need to set this listener up once. So I think that's what it's complaining about. Let's see if that solves my problem. Um, so I'm going in and I get it, and I'm going out and I get it. Because I only need to set this listener once. Well, let's switch and go to my page one. And I'm still, my listener's still working and my button. Go to my page two. My listener's still working. Let's see if I switch pages. Page one, it's there. Home, let's refresh. Two, I think, yeah, I think maybe that's the, I think that's probably the better play here. Um, like I said, this is just something quick I put together to try to solve the problem. Hopefully it pushes you in the right direction. Um, once again, source code is checked in. Um, this is the main URL that I'm using. And then I also have a link back um, to the blog post inside of my GitHub repo for you to take a look at. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this. Um, if there's something more you would like to see, something interesting, um, please leave a comment below and you can check it out. Once again, the problem we're solving here is if I'm actually using my Ionic components on kind of something larger than a mobile device, because on a mobile device, you're always going to get this side menu. Um, how can I get a menu across the top here in lieu of that side menu? Um, once again, thanks for checking, uh, stopping by the channel. Um, have a good one. Bye.